Hi, this is Dave from Rail Development Group. In this short video, we are going to demonstrate the installation steps that are used for installing the SC100 Rail Mounted Circuit Controller. After watching this video, I think you'll be impressed with how easy and intuitive the installation of this controller can be. For more information, please give us a call or visit our website. As with any installation, be sure to follow the safety rules and construction practices required by your railroad. Before beginning the installation, review the condition of the track work. The switch point should close smoothly and at the tip. The tip of the switch point should be aligned with the edge of the tie and the tie plate. The cross ties should be square to the rails. The SC100 requires approximately 10 inches between the ties for installation. This, incidentally, is less space than any other controller on the market. Prepare the SC100 for mounting by opening up the rail clamps. Set the gap at about 6 inches. This is the same as the base of the rail. Next, mount the point lug on the switch points. Use the construction practices and proper hardware that are required by your railroad. Center the connection point on the lug with the tie space. Make sure the point lug is level and it's not tipped upward or downward. Lift the SC100 and the rail mount into place from the outside of the track. This is done most easily with the help of an assistant. Center it in the tie space. Tighten the rail mount bolts evenly using a wrench. The braces on the inside of the rails have slotted holes. It's best to push the braces outward to allow for maximum clearance and tolerance to point run. Install the drop lug in its jam nuts. Roughly center the drop lug on the threaded portion of the point detector rod. Note that it's not necessary to use two jam nuts on the drop lug because the drop lug itself is threaded. Loosely assemble the ball jaw to the point detector connecting rod and then fasten it to the switch point lug. Next, we're going to set the length of the connecting rod by positioning both the switch points and the SC100 in the normal position. Start by removing the covers and set them aside. Operate the switch stand to the normal position. Next, position the point detector rod in the normal position by hand. It may be necessary to loosen the threaded portion of the rod that's closest to the track so that the centering spring and block do not get in the way. Next, adjust the length of the ball jaw so that it aligns with the ball on the drop lug. Tighten everything securely. Before proceeding with the wiring and the adjustment, make a final review of the SC100 install to ensure that the rods move freely and everything has adequate clearance. Secure all the bolted connections with their respective castle nuts and cotter pins. Adjusting the SC100 is very similar to making the point detector adjustments on an M23 electric switch machine. Open the switch points, install a quarter inch obstruction gauge, and close the switch points against it. Adjust the field side of the point detector rod so that the rollers ride up the ramp on the detector rod. Adjust until the front contacts on both limit switches open. Note that you can't back this adjustment off. It should always be made from the initial point where the front contacts are made and the rod is indicating. Turn the rod an additional quarter inch and tighten all the jam nuts. Note that there may be a slight difference in the operation of each switch. This is normal. If the switch is equipped with a front rod and you require a reverse point indication, repeat this adjustment on the reverse side using the other side of the point detector rod. If reverse side indication is not required, then adjust the reverse side of the detector rod so that it compresses the centering block approximately 3 eighths of an inch. This will enable the spring-loaded centering block to break the indication in the event of a broken connecting rod or lug.
the mechanical installation of the controller is now complete and the unit can be wired. Choose the wire entrance and the connection method that works best for your application. Route the wires around the perimeter of the unit. Tie bars are provided for securing the wires. Surprisingly, this concludes the installation of the SC100 controller. It just needs to be tested for the rules on your railroad. For more information on the SC100 circuit controller, visit our website or give us a call. Please consider Rail Development Group for all of your signal equipment needs. Thank you and have a safe day.